So this one says, what are the solutions to this quadratic equation? Um, okay. So the first thing I need to do is check to see if it's written in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Is it? Yeah. So then what's a? a is equal to one because it's not written, but it's implied. Um, b is the coefficient of x to the first power. So b is equal to positive six. And then c is the constant, right? So C is equal to negative 5. Now to solve this bad boy, we're going to use this equation or formula, right? It's called the quadratic formula for a reason. Negative B plus or minus the square root of, can you guys tell me the rest? B squared minus 4 times A times C all over 2A. You want to memorize this formula? Write it down every time in your notes. By the way, when I go to grade these notes, I'm checking. This formula should be written in every example. That's how I know it off the top of my head. Remember the 27 times in your brain? Oh, I probably have that in my brain a thousand times. Why do I write it down? I don't need to. It's in my head. But it, it, it helps me organize my thought process. It eliminates the potential for me making a mistake. So minus, what's B? 6. Plus or minus the square root of B squared, which is just 6 squared, minus 4 times A, what's A? 1 times C, what's C? Negative 5. All over 2 times A, what's A? 1. Next line, x is equal to negative 6 plus or minus the square root of, what's uh, 6 squared? 36. Now, this is important. I need to multiply negative 4 times 1 times negative 5. What's that equal? Positive 20. all over 2 times 1, which is 2. All right, so then I got x is equal to negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 56 all over 2. So we are almost done. We're trying to simplify this as best we can. I look. None of those are the answer. Well, one of them is, I think. But we got to we got to be careful like it might be this one. But I don't think 56 is reduced. So can I reduce 56? So when I go to reduce a radical, remember this process. I think 2 squared is equal to 4. 3 squared is equal to 9, 4 squared is equal to 16, 5 squared is equal to 25, 6 squared is equal to, oops, not 6 cubed, 6 squared is equal to 36, okay? And I, what I'm doing, and I can go on and on and on, I'm trying to think of a number that divides evenly into 56. I think 4, I think 4 does. So how do I double check that? Well, I take my calculator and I got to turn it on. I think I opened more than one. Yep, I did. And I'm going to see if 56 is divisible by four. I know that it is because seven times eight. So it's probably 16 or something like that or 14. I don't know. Let's see. Divisible by four. Yep. Goes to them 14 times. So what does that mean? Well, that means that I can rewrite this as x equals 
negative 6 plus or minus, so 4 times 14 equals 56. So I can take this and say the square root of 4 times the square root of 14 all over 2. Now I'm going to have to slide over here a little bit. And say x is equal to negative 6 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 14 all over 2. I'm writing out each step because I don't want to make a mistake. Now remember that I can split this up. In other words, I could say negative 6 over 2 plus or minus 2, two root 14 over 2. So what is negative 6 divided by 2? Negative 3. What is 2 divided by 2? Positive 1. What's 1 times the square root of 14? Square root of 14. Did I have this answer up there somewhere? Let's check. Oh, it's raining outside. So this is our final answer. And A is the correct answer. Does that make sense? Now, what I want to show you guys is that I've taken the liberty to put this in a calculator. So, on all the calculators now, they have this program. It's called Quadratic Formula or Quad Form. Um, and if I hit Enter, it's just going to ask me for A, B, and C. So, I could, sit, I could hit A is 1, B is 6. Here, let me, let me make that a little bigger so you can see it a little better. Um, and then C is negative 5. You have to use the negative sign. Then if I hit enter, I get these two numbers. Now, it's going to convert that to a decimal, but watch this. If I go negative 3 plus the square root of 14, well, bam, with the bacon sizzle, that's one solution. If I say negative 3 minus the square root of 14, I get that answer. So when we go to do your post-test, you can always double check um, to see if you've done your work right. Because if I'm honest with you guys, there's a lot of potential here to make a simple math mistake probably be a negative sign. It's always the, the issue. Somebody will forget a negative sign or something like that. So you always want to have a calculator to double check it. Okay? So that's it on that one.